Commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Air Force, a uh, gentleman named Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizadeh, Amir Ali Hajizadeh, uh, is disclosing that his air forces have taken over the controls of U.S. drones that were flying over Syria and Iraq. He also says that they were able to get firsthand intelligence from the drones because Iranian forces were able to actually penetrate uh, U.S. Central Command. Think about that. So wh wh what did they actually hack? What, what, what was it about these drones that they were actually hacking? And if, by the way, and it's, it's important to say, if what is being reported tonight by Iran news agencies quoting specific Iranian generals is in fact confirmed, and at this point, we have no reason to believe it isn't. Uh, more importantly, and here's another part of this story, which we're going to get into with, uh, with Mr. Malouf. How big a black eye would this be for the U.S. drone program, heck, for the U.S. military, if it can be hacked this easily? Former Pentagon official Michael Malouf is going to join us in just a minute. He's going to be talking about all this. But let, let, let's start with Rachel. Let's start with RT's Rachel Blevins, who has been uh, looking into this report. I think the first thing I want to know is uh, what did you get or what did you sense from uh, U.S. military officials when you asked about this today? Right. Well, the response from them was really interesting because the Pentagon responded. A spokesperson simply said, we're aware of the report and we have nothing to add to it. So they didn't confirm it and they didn't deny it, which is really interesting because Iran here is making a lot of really bold claims. I mean, they're claiming that they have the ability to not only hack into U.S. drones, but also to hack in more, into more than one drone at the time and also to control them. I mean, in that video we saw there's a drone and they're controlling it and making it land. And the United States is aware of that, you know, from those videos and from the way that they responded to it. So it's really interesting to see this response from the Pentagon. Well, you know, I'm glad you made that distinction because there's a difference between just, oh, my God, look, the United States drones over Syria and Iraq are taking some interesting pictures. Let's see if we can see what the pictures look like. That's story one, which appears to be evident according to the reports we're looking at in these pictures. But then there's the second part. And this is what you just said, right? The possibility that they didn't just look at the pictures, but that they actually commandeered the drone itself and thusly brought it to the ground, right? Right, exactly. And the fact that they're looking at more than one drone at the same time, I mean, that gives them a, the ability to see what the United States is seeing from a lot of different points of view over Iraq and Syria, and yet their drones don't even have to be involved if that's what's happening. A couple of questions. Let me bring in Michael Maloof here, uh, former Pentagon official. So many things to ask you about here. I, I guess th the first part is what we were just talking about, the possibility that they actually not only peered into the video, but actually <coughs> commandeered and brought down that drone. That's correct. Possible? Do you believe they could have? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, they probably not only did that, but they can actually use it to gain intelligence on what we're looking at and be able to move their forces uh, accordingly. And, and th this is technology. and it capability that they've had since at least 2011 mm -hmm. uh, when uh, they were able to commandeer the RQ-170 uh, stealth uh, drone uh, which was, flew from uh, was a CIA drone from Afghanistan flying over and doing reconnaissance over uh, Iran they were able to commandeer that drone bring it down to the ground in, um, in, in Iran, reverse engineer that drone, and they're now using drones similar to that. Plus, they got access to the electronics, highly uh, classified electronics inside that drone. They were, the, the Iranians have been, have been known for, for years to be expert in electronic warfare. They are great at hacking, and they, uh, they're able to control the, uh, the, uh, hmm. the, the uh, algorithms and the logic in order to control these things. They, I've had an Iranian tell me that if, if they can do this on a more sophisticated level, they can do this with radars, our, our ships, anywhere, any U.S. or NATO uh, capable, capable uh, aircraft. Is, is it protocol, by the way, I know a lot of people are watching us right now and they're wondering, why did we blow up our own drone? Is that proper protocol in a situation like this? If we could not gain access to it and it had high, highly sensitive uh, uh, technologies on it, sure. Second question I really want to ask you, as a 
former Pentagon official. What's the thinking tonight as folks in the Pentagon are monitoring RT tonight and watching this report? Are people going to be fired over something like this? Yeah. Are they worried? I mean, is this a screw up? I mean, well, it, it shows. I, I'm a little surprised that the Iranians revealed this this capability. We probably we were aware of it, but the fact that they've actually gone public it then allows us now to figure it out. Uh, we probably did not have sy systems sufficiently encrypted, and they they were able then to um, uh, toy and hack into the electronics of that drone or all the drones. And in fact, the RQ-170, they were able to gain control of that by hacking the satellite that controlled it. If they can do this, and if they have this information, right, uh -huh. am I wrong to think that maybe the Russians, the Chinese, and others out there aren't having some of this shared with them, well, and at not, the very least? Not only that, I think they're probably learning a lot from, the, from Russia, from China and also uh, sharing whatever intelligence they get, yes. As well as the technology. That stealth technology was just incredible. And, and now their drones are, are all stealth. To watch these pictures is really just amazing. And, yeah. and we're learning that th there may be others. I know you're working on a follow-up for tomorrow, right? Right, yeah, looking into more of if there is more footage and what does it consist of and how can we confirm that? Because, you know, this footage that comes out, we look at it and this could be anywhere. I mean, it could be exactly. Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria. So we really want to find out where exactly that footage is taking place and if there's any way that we can verify. And you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that because we should probably underscore this, the three of us, that this is video that is being released by the Iranian military. They are on the record. We even have a general speaking to this video, but it's being released by FARS, which is the Iranian news agency. It's their story. They've made the video available and we've decided to share it with you. So th that, that's pretty much the procedure of how this story has gotten to the air. We think it's a noteworthy, if not extremely newsworthy story. Do you not believe oh, so? Uh, I think they wouldn't have done it unless they, they actually could do this. And I think that they're telling us something. There, there'd be no reason for them to make this stuff up no, or make these no, pictures because up. Because right? they knew I mean, it could be uh, poo-pooed if, if it was not true. I think it's true. I think it's only a, 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 a fraction of their ca uh, electronic capabilities. And do you think if the United States believed this was not true, they would have denied it to us immediately because there's no denial right. today. I know. I know. So no, you believe that's no, telling? That's, that's telling as well. That's very telling. Wow. Michael Maloof, thanks for your uh, participation. Rachel, good stuff.